Oh dear. Felix, I asked Diana and Mrs. Packer to open for dinner, so you better hurry and wash up a bit. What, am I to be the only spouse again? Can't help it, darling. Mr. Packard's in Washington and all of Diana's suitors are in the trenches. There must be some old gray beard left somewhere to invite for Diana. Oh, there are a few leftovers floating around, but Diana doesn't like them. If she can't have the best male company, she prefers female. Diana's a peach. She should have married one of the boys before they all went over. Poor Aubrey Lawrence was madly in love with her. Hurry up, there's soot on your cheek. All right. If I'm to dine with three women, I'd better look my best. Yes, my dear, cock of the walk. Here are the evening papers. We gained three miles again. My dear, your maid told me to come right in. Oh, Mrs. Packer, I'm so glad you could come on such short notice. I jumped at the invitation. It's so lonesome with John away. How lucky you are to have your wife at home. Thanks to her business, the government prefers her here. Take off your things. I'm a little early, but I took advantage of the chance to ride this way in Mrs. Morgan's car. Do you like Mrs. Morgan? Why, yes. Don't you? I don't think you ought to like her. Why not? She has a long, bad tongue. Talks about people. Is... Does she? You ought to hear her, but then you ought not to hear her. About me? Now, there, my dear, I have come for a jolly little dinner party, and I'm not going to gossip. Still, if she said anything against me, I ought to protect myself. That's just it. That's what I thought. And when she said, oh no, why should I tell you? Why shouldn't you tell me? Yes, why shouldn't I? After all, I am one of your best friends and you ought to know. Certainly, I ought to know. But you may never forgive me. Not forgive you for protecting me. That's true. You must protect yourself. It is my duty to tell you. What is it? You have me quite scared. Tells me something like that, of course she will tell everyone else. By this time, no doubt, it is all over town. How dreadful. What have I done? It isn't what you've done. It's about Diana Chesbro. She's coming tonight. Is she? Your invitation? Why, yes. Are you sure? Of course I am sure. Well... In what way can gossip couple my name with Diana's? She is one of my best friends. Oh, is she? I am quite sure she is. Maybe she is. Still, they wonder why Diana didn't marry one of the boys before they went off to war. Why should she have? Yes, why should she have, really? Still, anyone as attractive as Diana, she had plenty of chances, didn't she? Oh, yes. But they say, well, nice men, too, and one or two real catches. Don't you think it's strange she didn't marry one of them? Yes, I do think it's strange. Of course you do. I said it. But why do you think she didn't? I don't know. What does she say? I think she says that if she... It's just what everyone is saying and everybody feels so sorry for you. Sorry for me. My dear, you get all the sympathy. What for? Is it possible you've been so blind? Blind, I... You're with each other a great deal, aren't you? Yes. And your wife? Oh, so that's what you mean. Oh, my poor dear, that's what they say. Just what do they say? That she and... Oh no, my dear, of course, I don't believe it. But just but in exact words, what do they say? Hasn't Felix ever admired her in your presence? Yes. What does she say? Oh, that Diana's a peach and she's popular and all the men like her and many of them want to marry her and- it, 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 There you are, they said so. And Mrs. Morgan told me that Diana refused the men because she, well, she said, because she, oh, Diana, you dear sweet thing, good evening. Hello, Mrs. Packard. Hello, Enid Old Top. I'm here early because I came straight up from town after dressing at the club. Canteen work all day. How's everybody? I've been nursing at the hospital all afternoon. Hmm, isn't Enid a dear? Doing the home nursing, releasing someone else to get the glory over there? I'd have gone over there myself, but... Why didn't you? Against the law. I have relatives in the trenches. Oh, I'd love the romance of being there. Enid, why don't you get the letters from your brother, won't you, and read it to Mrs. Packard? He gives the most unusually interesting descriptions. Yes, it's most interesting. Excuse me a moment. It's in my desk upstairs. My dear Miss Chesbro, pardon me for seeming to presume, but I'm only trying to save you. Are you aware of what people are saying about you? Saying about me? Of course, they wouldn't say it to you. What wouldn't they say? It's so much easier to natter than to say disagreeable things. What, the people are saying disagreeable things about me? You haven't heard. No, but I should certainly like to know. Of course you would, any young girl like you. But, my dear, do you really think you should come to this house? Come to this house? Why, Enid and I went to school together. She is one of my oldest and best friends ever. Did you say? 
you doubt it. After what she said? She said something to make you doubt her friendship to me? <laughs> Surely you are mistaken. My dear, I have eyes and ears. I can see in here. What did Enid say? She said she wished you had married one of the boys before they went off to war. Oh, that. You admit it. And still you come here. That is what they say. What do I admit? I don't follow your reasoning. I don't see what I've just said. That you don't see love is always blind. But love? We haven't said a word about love. Of course not. It is a delicate word to use. And in this matter, it is, well, the world does not think it becoming. Mrs. Packard, I do not understand your innuendos. Tell me the plain facts. What are people saying and what has love got to do with it? Ms. Haldeman. Felix. And you. I? They couple your names together. They say that Felix and I? Well, it's a lie. Doesn't make a difference whether it is a lie. The point is what people say. The people who say such things have rotten little minds that have enough brains to entertain themselves. Yes, bro. And you're just the same repeating such slander. You insinuate that I am I one do. of the... You have insulted me. Not more than you have insulted me. You will suffer for this, Miss Chesbro. I tell you something in all friendliness of spirit to save you from the slanders of the world and then you reward me by- You listen to idle tongues and then you come here and rob me of my happiness by putting poison into my mind. I was telling you the truth, but people do not thank you for telling them the truth. I am the one who knows what the truth is. I know that Enid and I are friends and Enid and Felix and I are friends and that is all. Felix adores Enid. She would never care for any other woman. Wouldn't she? Does the world know more than Mrs. Haldeman herself? It does not. Why, just a few moments ago in this very room, she told me herself that she wished you had married because she knows that Felix is in love with you. She pretends to be your friend, but in her heart, she hates you. It's not true. It is not pleasant to argue with you, Miss Chesbro. I shall find my hostess and make my excuses and not stay to dinner. If I have been too utterly rude, I humbly apologize, but I cannot allow you to circulate such outrageous slang. Hey, Diana, when did you get here? You want to help me mix the cocktails? Felix, a terrible thing has happened. They talk about us. Who is they and who is us? People are talking about you and me. Why, what have we done? Do you like a drop of orange bitters? You're not taking it seriously. But what is there? That's it. What is there? I mean, if there really were something, oh, it's most embarrassing for me. I don't know how to say it to you. My dear Diana, you can say anything to me. Haven't I proved myself a real friend? But if what they say really is true, I could Don't see- you know whether it's true or not? I thought I did. But after she said it, I began to wonder. Wonder what? <sighs> Out with it. You know I love Enid. Why, you've grown up together. Of course you love her. I wouldn't hurt her for the world. No, you saint. So you do love her more than anyone else, don't you? Of course, but I don't- Don't say but! But why are why you- Why did you say but? Did I say but? I don't know. What was I saying? You said of course, but- I don't remember. You have me all confused. You don't think I'm in love with you, do you? Great, Scott. Do they say that you're in love with me? You never have thought. I am not so conceited to think <sighs> I could just... Then, but... Well, now what, but? Are you in love with me? No. Thank goodness. But... What? That's what they say. That I am in love with you. And that I'm in love with you. And... Exactly! Holy smokes. But it's not true. No. But they say it is. And what they say- and That's um, the same thing. What can we do? That's what I'm asking you. Go straight to Enid. But tell her. It. Nonsense. She said so. But she said so. Mrs. Packard said that they all say it. How did they know? They don't know, but they think they do. So it amounts to the same thing. But Enid can't believe it. It's There's proof that she does believe it. It's too absurd. Mrs. Packard said that Enid said that you said that you were in love with me or something and that Enid hates me. Well, that's not true. I know she likes you. But Mrs. Packard wouldn't dare say she anything. She said that Enid hates you. Perhaps she does. 
Perhaps she's been jealous over nothing at all. Perhaps she's been imagining things. Perhaps she too has been saying things, making it seem as if I'm some- Anna, Mrs. Packard says you insulted her and that she feels she cannot stay for dinner. I apologize to Mrs. Packard, but she would not accept I my- I admit you have insulted me. Only after you insulted me. You hear, Mrs. Haldeman? It is just as I said. She accused me of insulting her when I was trying only to be kind and give her a little motherly advice. Mrs. Packard took it upon herself to repeat some things that people were saying. Things that are manifestly untrue. Whether they are true or not, it is highly unpleasant for me to have this altercation in my house. I can tell by your voice that you're willing to believe that woman. Mrs. Haldeman, I resent being called that woman. I don't care what you resent. You've come here and spoiled a beautiful friendship I've had all my life and I don't care what I call you. But in my house, my guests. Don't worry. I shall not be your guest another moment. I'm going. No, Diana, I can't let you leave in anger. But I do. I leave with my heart black against you for listening to what she said. What did I say? You said that Felix and I were in love with each other and you insinuated- I never said such a thing in all my life. Mrs. Packard, why just a few moments ago in this very room, you just said- In all my life. Can you look me straight in the eye and tell me that you never said it? I never said it. Never, never, never. Didn't you say that you have eyes and ears and you can see in here and that everybody was saying that what I was- What everybody else says isn't what I say. Didn't you tell me that Felix was in love with me or- I know that. She told me that. I never told you that. Why, my dear, you did just a few moments ago in this very room. I never said such a thing in all my life. And how you can imagine. That I am nothing. I know what I see and what I hear. And you certainly told me you ought to know all that I had heard so you could protect yourself. So I told you in a friendly way, trying to be a help. And there we are. Yes. Where are we? You have no one to blame but yourself. We have no one to blame but you. Mrs. Packard, I had no idea. I had to protect myself until you insinuated. Hey, dear, it was you yourself who said that Felix wanted to marry her. I said nothing of the sort. I said that she said that... <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Didn't you say to your wife that you wanted to marry Miss Chesbro? I never said such a thing in all my life. And whoever said it got it out of whole cloth. She denies it, of course. She has to deny it. To admit it would be false. Whether it was true or false, she would have to deny it. Why would she have to deny it? Because the ethics of a lady would make her deny it in order to protect you. So it doesn't matter whether it is true or not. Nothing we can say or do can take out the miserable thoughts in your mind. Not my mind. Everybody's mind. I have nothing to do with it. Enid, can't you stand up and defend us? Ah, you admit you must be defended. The whole world has to be defended against women like you. If you were in my house, I'd show you the door. Enid, show her the door and prove that you trust Felix and me and that you know that there isn't and never has been anything between us but the most innocent friendship. You don't move. You don't trust me. Always trusted you. I never had the slightest suspicion. But perhaps I have been blind. Perhaps the world has been able to see better from the distance and- Are you and going to take the world's word against ours? Are you going to listen to a silly gossip and let one minute of slander outweigh the love and loyalty you've had from Diana and me for a lifetime? Why don't you tell your wife you love her? I do love my wife, but I do not see any reason to make a public statement of it. I stated that publicly when I married her. She knows I love her. Don't you? Do I? She adores you. Don't you know it? But Diana is pretty, and if you have always- I leave this house forever. Thanks to you, Mrs. Packard, I've lost two friendships that meant more to me than even the world's opinion. I shall never see either of you again. Diana, come back. It is too outrageous to allow such contemptible gossip to break your friendship with Enid. You see, she does not want her to go. It would never be the same between me and Enid again. I do not want her to go because I do not want to have an evil tongue like yours triumphant. If you had come into our house and stolen our silver, you would be less a thief than you are now. New silver can be bought, but tarnished friendship can never be bright again. You caused this by your malicious remarks about my regard for Miss Chesbro. I didn't say it. Pardon me, you did! 
I didn't say it. She did. I didn't. You did. I didn't. What does it matter how it happened? It's done. Done. Our friendship is over. But I won't go without leaving my memory here white and clean. I don't care what the world believes, but I want Enid to know I've never had a word against her. And so I'm going to tell the truth, even though I would rather have died than said this before. Ah, now we will hear something. Diana, be careful. You are under no... So you know what she is going to say? No, she doesn't know. It is my secret. No one else is known. There's only one person I love or ever have loved, and he's over there. She's making it up. Likely story. I'm not making it up. If you don't believe me, then I'll have to tell you his name. No, no, Diana, it's not fair to demand that of you. They will not believe me, but I'll do anything for Enid. She'll have to know. It's Aubrey Lawrence. Aubrey Lawrence? He wanted to marry you. That's true, he did, but Diana wouldn't. Why wouldn't you? Because I did. You married him? Yes, I married him. The last day before he sailed. But your family didn't like him. That's why I didn't tell them. But you can go and tell them yourselves now, Mrs. Packard. Aubrey Lawrence, did you really, Diana? He hasn't any money. Oh, but he's straight to the core. I'm awfully glad, Diana. So oh, am I, Diana? Forgive me. There's the door, Mrs. Packard. And the world outside is waiting to hear the latest gossip. I'll go, my dear, because I have offended you, and I know you are not ready to forgive me. But I promise not to breathe it to a soul. Not to a soul. Diana, I'll never forgive you for not telling me you married Aubrey. Why didn't you tell me you married Aubrey? But I didn't. You didn't? But you said. Oh, what I said. It doesn't matter what I said. Well, tell everyone. Of course you will. But if it's not true. It might be true. But it's not. Is it? I told you it wasn't. I mean, now I don't know whether to believe you or not. Nor will people know whether to believe her or not. But when Aubrey hears of it, Diana, what will he think? He will wish it were true. But what will he say about you? He'll say, I wish it were. And do you? I do. Oh, have you found out since he left you really love him? Madly. Madly, madly. Shall I cable him that? I have already. You haven't. I have. I'm going to marry him by proxy. <laughs> do have a cocktail on that. But when we tell people you married him by proxy, after you told Mrs. Packard that you were married already, what will people say? What will people say, in any case, exactly what they choose? Mm -hmm.